Okay, this is August Google Ads AMA. If you stumbled on this video randomly on YouTube and you're like, what the heck is this and who is this guy? My name is Austin LeClaire. I'm co-founder of Grow My Ads, a Google Ads agency. We have a free group called PPC Launchpad. The link to that group will be in the description below. Once a month, I do a completely free ask me anything about Google Ads thread. People will put their questions in there and then I do this video response. So in this video, you're going to see questions pop up on the screen and I'm just going to give a detailed response. I like doing that better than Q and A's because it gives me a chance to actually go show real examples if I want to inside of accounts and we can blur confidential information in that case. Where live Q and A's a lot of times, they get a little clunky, you may give an answer, and, but you need to give them you know, actual supporting facts or a real case study. And that can't be done half the time on live Q and A's because you can't just bring up confidential account information. So I like doing it this way. If you want to ask me any question about Google ads, you can do it completely free. So go join our free group, PPC Launchpad. Again, the link to that group will be in the description below. And I do this every month and record it, launch it to YouTube, launch it to our group, but it gives you an opportunity to get free Google ads expert advice on a video response. Uh, and I plan to continue to do this as long as I can. So go check that out. Okay. I'm back. France was amazing. I really enjoyed my time. I got sick towards the end. And so it's been a bit rough getting back to reality, but I'm healthy now. I'm back in my office and getting after it. So Let's go start with question number one. Pretty long question here, so I may shorten it up a bit, but basically, how can we import our lead list to Google and only run ads for this target audience? Is it an effective strategy? What are your thoughts on this? Buying a lead list and using this lead list to run ads because my ads seem not very effective. Also, I get many calls from my clients and everyone's seeing lots of clicks, but no calls, lots of clicks, no clients, et cetera. Uh, nowadays, this is the same for everyone. Um, I don't know if I totally agree. I, we've got, you know, uh, like a hundred some clients. And so and a lot of them are having lots of success. The economic climate is softer. So certain industries, we've definitely noticed a pullback. I'm very tight with a furniture company, furniture industries, <laughs> you know, not what it was a couple years ago. Um, and all the data proves that and I, Wayfair CEO came out and said that it was the number one sector to their down end. So certain s industries are, are just feeling a punch right now because consumers just aren't spending as much as they used to, or consumers increase their spending in certain industries during those COVID years. But <clears throat> the, the fact that everyone's having lots of clicks, but no calls. I don't, I guess I don't know what industry you're in, but I, I don't, so I don't know. I don't think that's an accurate representation of like all of Google ads. However, your question on how can we import our lead list to Google and only run ads for this target audience? Is it an effective strategy? It can be, it's a limited strategy. I still prefer, can we just make non-brand cold traffic work and get enough data for the machine learning to learn off of who our audience is, who our converters are, and then scale that. However, you can use targeted lists for remarketing purposes, or if you do have a very warm list, you can create a campaign just targeting that list. And then if they're going and searching for terms within your industry, or again, you could use display if you wanted to, you're able to you know bid higher for those people. So Yes, it can be useful, or you can just layer it on your campaigns and have that, that data layered there as an audience layer. And also depending on your bid strategy, you're able in some cases to actually bid increase. If you're using manual bidding in that case, bid increase what you would want to pay for if that searcher is in that audience pool and they're searching for a keyword that you're going after. Um, I'm going to show you quickly how to set that up. Okay, I'm not gonna give you the full campaign build. That would be like probably an entire YouTube video. But what you want to do here is you, you're in your audience manager and then you, you just wanna click customer list normally. 
this customer list, then you can upload either a file or you can connect a data source. So it's like, it could be a Google sheet, or if you're using some form of a sales CRM system or a CRM system. So here you can upload all of that. Normally you're going to need, I forget the exact number to have to look it up again, but you're going to need a decent sized list for this to even be anything. So if you just have a few hundred people on a list, it's, it's not going to do anything. And in fact, I don't even know if Google will show much to a list that has only a couple hundred people. Let me see what the, usually this will tell us. Okay. Yeah. So I found this real quick support article. I will, I'll try to add this in the thread to you inside of PPC Launchpad. So this will talk about sizes of customer lists. And if they're too small, you get too low volume. And so they're saying a hundred user records. I thought you needed at least a thousand matched records to be able to fire ads on. And so anyways, go, go read through this, but it's just something to be cautious about. So you do need a large audience list for if you're, if you're going to go this customer match route and then only target those, by the way, if you're doing a campaign that you're only trying to target those people, then you need, when you set the campaign up, when you go into the audience section, you need to make sure you set it to target only and not observation. I see that all the time. People call a remarketing campaign, remarketing. And I'm like, you're not even actually showing ads to that audience list because you set this up to observation mode. So I have a full YouTube video on the channel about how to set up display remarketing campaigns. Even if you're not doing a remarketing campaign, there's a section there where I go through the audience build. You should watch that because that will pertain to even if you're doing like a search campaign to make sure you set that up correctly to target just that audience. Okay, so, and then your second question here, do you have any strategy to get rid of fake Google clicks? No, I, I think, you know, listen, there's, so, there's software out there. I'm not a huge fan of a lot of the, the click cease and, and the others where they claim that they're saving you all this money from like fraudulent clicks. I think Google does a pretty good job already. Microsoft ads, that's a different story. I think there's a lot of junk there. Is there, is there junk from Google? Absolutely, especially from Performance Max campaigns if you're running non-shopping ads. We've seen over the last couple of years a lot of spam and junk that comes from, from that type of traffic. Normally, if, you get junk, if you're getting junk traffic from Google, it's going to come from two places, either Google Display, because Google Display is just horrendous, or Search Partners. Those two variables, usually if you can turn search partners off and if there's any display you're running, if you just run a test of shutting that off, a lot of times that will fix the issue if you're getting a lot of this junk traffic. So it does happen. I don't, I don't know what to tell you. Like successful companies make lots of money from Google ads. We make lots of money from Google ads. You just have to make it work. And a lot of times when people are saying, well, I'm getting all this junk, is it's just Google's fault. I don't fully buy that. I think usually it's like, well, your campaigns are set up incorrectly or your offer's bad in general. But I don't know of any industry that can't operate in Google ads and make money from it just because they get a bunch of spam or junk traffic. I've never seen it. There are certain industries where like locksmiths, where it's like cutthroat competitive. And there were certain cities that I was doing some consultations in where the, the mafia was involved. So there was like, you know, some real craziness going on there. That's so unique though. I would say in most cases, you know, Google's traffic's pretty good. Is there going to be junk traffic involved in there? Absolutely. Google's a monopoly. And what, what can you do about it, right? Just figure out is my offer good? Or my, is my campaign set up correctly? Am I getting relevant traffic? If you're doing all of those and you're still getting a bunch of junk traffic, then make, again, check search partners and check display and make sure you turn those off. Get rid of those variables if possible. If you want to try the software, go for it. Like ClickSees, again, I'm just not a huge fan of it. I've actually done I wish I would have recorded this, which was years ago. I took an account that was using ClickSees. I removed ClickSees and then nothing happened. <laughs> so I removed all the IP addresses that they blocked and nothing happened to the account and the account just maintained what it was doing. I believe when you're blocking IP addresses, if, if you're true bot traffic or these bot farms or click farms or whatever, they're 
going to be using unique IP addresses at all times. It's not just one IP address. So that's going to be probably changed up quite a bit. So I don't think blocking IP addresses does a lot. If you have like a developer or you're looking at your backend data and you see specific IP addresses that look like bad traffic, then block those IP addresses. But again, I don't think you have to pay crazy money to the software to, to, in order to do that. Um, and so that's just my rant on, <laughs> on all of that. So do you have a method to dynamically? All right. So first off for question three, for generating B2B leads, do you suggest responsive ads over SCAG? I don't know. I guess it, responsive ads would be an ad type. SCAG would be how you structure your ad group. So I'm not entirely sure on this question. Um, but yes, we use responsive ads. No SCAG, single keyword ad group. I do not recommend single keyword ad groups today. Go check out my video on YouTube on how to set up a search campaign. And I talk about what I recommend there. And I even mentioned SCAG in that video. So I'll give you more information there. Number four, do you have a method to dynamically change the H1 text on landing page based on the search keyword? This would be something that your landing page software should be able to do. And, and that's more of like a landing page setup. But yes, usually it's through the, a URL parameter and then the page will pick that up. It can be done. You just have to usually set that up within the landing page software that you're using. Number five, do you have... Do you have a suggestion to click? No, don't click. <laughs> so here's the question. Do you have suggestions to click competitor ads as a black hat strategy? Because I think they're doing it to you. No, I don't recommend that. It doesn't do it. Eventually Google has, Google has their own parameters set, right? So if they think you're getting invalid clicks and listen, a competitor will click your ad, right? But if they came in and did that every single day, Google's own algorithm is going to pick that up. And that will be considered an invalid click. So no, there's no one who had there's there's no one who is successfully making money, building real successful companies that are going in every day clicking their competitor ads. Not that I know of. Like, you know, my biggest, richest, most successful, fast growing, incredible clients, they are creating either an absolute amazing product or service. So they're providing a high quality product or service. They have incredible customer service, fast shipping if they're shipping involved, great pricing, very, very competitive pricing, and they have a rock star team. And their offer is great. They're building a real, real company. They're not, they're not tactically or hacking their way to making tens of millions of dollars in revenue per year they don't worry about this stuff. They're worrying, they're worrying more about other business strategies and decisions within their day to day. So I can tell you the most successful clients, no one is waking up every day and clicking their competitor ads. Don't worry about that. Worry. And again, Google will, will, will pick this up. Worry about, is my offer competitive? Am I offering high quality products and customer service or services to my customers? Do I have a great offer? Work on your business. Is my team killing it? Do we have systems and processes to make sure this my company can grow correctly? These You should be thinking about your business, not how do I tactically hack my way through Google ads and, and then you know sabotage competitor ads. Don't worry about any of that. Focus on the, the, the macro strategy of your company and none of this will mean anything to you as you grow into making millions in revenue. Okay, Jamie, I am running a new campaign three weeks ago for a medical aesthetics clinic. I created one search campaign with one ad group for each of their treatment types. I had some trouble with disapproval, so some ad groups got a head start compared to others. I'm getting a couple of conversions from ad groups, but the one with the highest spend hasn't gotten any conversions yet. Ideal CPA would be 55. We break even around 110. Would it be worth letting the lip augmentation ad group run hoping to get some conversion or just pause it out and focus on other ad groups that are performing better let me just take a look here so this is a very good question i would look at so in this ad group i would be looking at what keywords you have running in here usually what you'll find is there is a keyword that will hog up a lot of this 
The reason I'm not super concerned yet is because you only have 140 clicks at the ad group level there. Now, if you truly are limited by budget, I don't know what your budget is here. So I know what your CPA goals are, but I don't know what your budget is, right? Then, and you're, you're, you don't have a ton of volume just quite yet, but if your budget's small, and this is hogging up most of it, then I, I would probably start pausing this out and letting those others run. Now, look at the keyword level though, because you could have, let's say you have a few keywords in this ad group. It could be one that's hogging a lot of the clicks and costs. And then, yeah, if you have like a keyword in there that's at $600 and has not converted once and has 140 clicks, I probably would look at just pausing that one out right now and letting your more more successful ones go. This might be just a bit too early right now to be making this decision. Now, I know this was 14 days ago when you asked this, so your your landscape probably has changed here. But if anyone else looking at this and you're in this specific case, this is limited amounts of clicks right now. It's not a massive amount, so you don't want to judge things too early. But Normally, when I see ad groups in the beginning that are high spend, zero conversions, usually it's one or two keywords that are an issue. It's not the full ad group itself. If if it is the full ad group itself, then pause it out. If you can spend your full daily budget on these other ad groups that are working, that's going to get you to the volume quicker, the conversion volume that you want. So it wouldn't be a bad idea if you do look in there and, and all the keywords look to be poorly performing. Hopefully that answers that. Okay, hi Austin, nice meeting you. Cool that you enjoy your time as well. Thank you. I am new to Google ads and haven't started any ads. I was wondering where I should start. Boy, actually, Julie, uh, thank you for your answer here uh, that you gave back. So where to start? Go to my YouTube channel and start there for now. Lots of great free information. I am going to have a comprehensive course that's gonna be coming out more of a beginning to end type course for people like yourself, also advanced and intermediate sort of Google ads, media buyers too. We'll get a lot of great value there too. Building a course is super hard. I also run, you know, a company here at Grow My Ads. So I'm very busy in my day to day, just running a team and a business and uh, lots of movement going on each day. So uh, this course is going to come out eventually. I just have to grind it out and get it to the video editor. So that will be coming, but for now, just check out our YouTube channel. Okay, I'm trying to understand how the numbers work with Google ads for e-com. So I search for sunscreen, I can see the items from 20 to $60 in shopping ads. Now, if I try to see if the campaign would be profitable or not, I don't see how they would be. Assuming a CPC of $1, a conver conversion rate of 1%, and if I take AOV as 40, the ROAS is just a 40%. So can you help me understand profitability with Google ads? Are these brands losing money with Google ads? Does Google ads not work for $50 AOV stores? Uh, good question. So it is harder if your AOV is low, AOV average order value. So yes, it is hard. Does, can it work? Absolutely. In this sunscreen example, I don't know who they are, but more than likely the people selling sunscreen are big, big retailers or big brands. And more than likely they're not making profit up front. What you see a lot of times with companies is they are willing, th these are bigger companies normally, they are willing to acquire a customer, break even, or in some cases, even at a loss, knowing that if I can get that customer into my world, they are going to buy our product or a percent of new customers will buy our product X more times throughout the year or throughout their life. So that's LTV, lifetime value. Now, you've got to have the cash to be able to pull this off. But what you're playing there is the long-term LTV game of new customer acquisition. That's how the big players usually play the game. They're not trying to squeeze you know, $50. So on, on, on sunscreen, they're not trying to squeeze maximum profit out of a $40 sunscreen or a $20 sunscreen. Um, and so in many cases here, yeah, you're right. Probably most people selling sunscreen online aren't actually generating any profit on those sales. Maybe some of them are, I don't know, but a lot of times, especially in, I'll just put sunscreen under like 
cosmetics, I guess. But so especially something like cosmetics, it's very, very competitive, very cutthroat, very expensive. The big, big players who usually are dominating in those spaces, they're not trying to squeeze out a lot of return um, from those sales. That's why when I have consultations with guys who are trying to do drop shipping and they're like, well, I need, you know, a five, 600, 700% return on ad spend for this to work. I tell them, good luck. It's not going to happen. I mean, sorry, you bought a drop shipping course that led you down this path to think you could just like get rich by throwing up a, a product feed on a Shopify website and just throwing shopping ads at it. It won't work. Google ads is is competitive. So you have to have a real business and you have to operate under real business finance. And in this case, this is why I'm very blunt and upfront with a lot of people on my consultations or on my YouTube videos where I'm like, you got to know what you're getting into before you start just spending money on Google ads, thinking you're going to hack your way to riches. It's not that quick. In some cases it can be, but it's competitive and you have to operate with a real strategy. And so the sunscreen case, if someone came to me and they were selling sunscreen and this is what the data shows, yeah, I'd be having a real conversation with them, letting them know, are you able to operate at break even? Are you able to operate at maybe even acquiring a customer at a loss? Because you can't sell a $20 product on Google ads at $1 clicks if, you're, if your conversion rate's 1%. <laughs> and so you got to either A, have a full plan. Like, are you doing upsells through the checkout process? So your average order value is not actually $20. It's now $80 because you sold them some sort of sunscreen bundle package or something. And you know you can get 50% of the people to do that. I'm obviously throwing out just fake scenarios, but that these are the conversations that should be taking place and these are the strategies that you should be thinking about. So yes, in these cases, some of these brands are not making money when you're looking at that. But good good analysis that you did, that you, you have the mindset right now of thinking about the math side of things on how, on how this works. Julie, nice pick, enjoy your break and the French wine. Thank you. I, uh, I did a private wine tour in Burgundy. It was really incredible. Learned a lot about wine. So if any of you ever go to the Burgundy region, uh, I think it was Dijon and, and Bone and, and then that southern re region below uh, Dijon and Bone, it was, it was amazing. So I'm into Burgundy wines. Over the last year, I've gotten into it. Learned a lot. It was just really cool seeing all the chateaus and the domains that are running all of this. So yeah, highly recommend if you guys ever are in the Burgundy region. What are ways to rank top of page against companies with higher ad spend budget and who have been advertising longer? What are my controllables and areas to maximize on? Well, so you can do this, right? Amazon's definitely going to spend more money than you, but you can beat Amazon because Amazon's very generic in their ads and generic in their targeting. Um, I would assume, I've never obviously seen Amazon's Google ads account, but I would assume their quality scores aren't great. And so... Uh, in this case, you what you can control is the structure, the keyword targeting, the ad copy for high click-through rate, and the landing page for a high landing page experience for the user. All of that will translate into high quality scores, which will translate into high ad rank. Um, that's how you are able to beat companies that spend higher. That is the genius behind Google Ads. They didn't create whoever spends the most wins. Now, unfortunately, usually if you have more money, you can still muscle your way through your competition. But they created this formula where it really is, you could be spending the most, but if your quality score is a one and your competitors got a quality score of a 10, technically the person with the quality score of 10 is going to beat you depending on the ad rank there. Um, so their bid would still have to be high enough to compete, but they would they could outrank a Amazon in that case, the ad positioning and pay lower CPCs due to the fact that they have the high ad rank for that particular auction. So your controllables, again, your structure, your keyword targeting, your ad copy, your landing page, and your offer. If you have a better offer, you're always usually going to win. So offer and pricing there. So that's what you can control to beat the big competitors. 
Is there any guide or checklist for PMAX best practices or optimization checklist? Uh, yeah, go check out the Performance Max course that's for free on the YouTube channel or actually in the, the school group. So I have a full optimization section there. I don't have like a specific checklist per se, but you know, I have each module broken out on optimization. So go check that out. Uh, I know there really isn't that much you can do to a PMAX campaign in theory, but in fact, there's plenty you can do to optimize. The trouble is I couldn't find a nicely structured way yeah, again, I don't I don't have a checklist, but the course, the Performance Max course, just go through the optimization modules and you'll have everything you need there. Hey Austin, I'm running a new search campaign on a new ad account for a local service business, but with a very modest budget, 1200 a month. CPCs for the campaign range from three to 22, depending on keyword. Would you suggest running one ad group or two focusing on their most profitable services or because of small budget, just one ad, ad group to concentrate budget there? And how would you theme keywords in that group? Also, would you recommend manual CPC to be able to control costs more and maximize click to get data faster? Uh, good questions. So if, uh, if you haven't seen the video on how to set up a search campaign that I did, that will definitely help you. You've got to be cautious here. You don't want to be bidding on keywords that are $22 because you have a $1,200 per month budget, which let me get my calculator out real quick. That's, you know, $40 per day you have. And so you're you really, you know, you want 10 clicks per day minimum just to get enough breathing room and volume to be able to work with. So you really wouldn't want to be spending more than $4 per click because you just don't have the budget there. So a $22 CPC is out, out of reach in this scenario. So you're going to want to target the keywords that are, I would say $5 or under and how you theme that will be dependent on the, the, the keywords themselves. I'll give you an example. And again, this is on that YouTube video. If you're a plumber and you're launching a plumber campaign, you're going to have plumber locations. So that would be terms like plumber near me, plumber, Miami, etc. Then you're going to have specific plumber terms, emergency plumber, 24 seven plumber. You don't want to mix those two because those actually are themes. Those are different themes because now in the emergency plumber keyword set, you can create an ad group for emergency and 24 hour terms. And then your ad copy can be 100 percent specific to being an emergency plumber. And then your landing page can also be specific to your emergency plumber services. The location-based ad group is a little more generic, but you can still, you know, these people are targeting, Hey, I'm looking for a plumber in Miami, or I'm looking for a plumber near me. And yeah. that ad copy is going to be a little more generic but different from emergency. You don't really, those people aren't looking for the emergency services. They're looking for just a general plumber in their area. So that's how you have to think about the themes. Again, that video I go through and, and give you a complete breakdown on sort of that ad group structure. And then in regards to bidding, if you're brand new, yes, manual CPC, probably in your case, because you're only at $1,200 per month. So manual CPC is going to give you the most control in the beginning. Max clicks if you're being more aggressive, but small, small budget like you have at $1,200 a month, I'd probably recommend manual CPC in your case. Hi, Austin. I own an e-commerce store in the family and relationship niche selling gifts for all occasions, including but not limited to birthdays, anniversaries, housewarming, graduations, wedding gifts, etc. I'm planning to set up one Google shopping ads campaign for 20 of my top products with a $60 per day, a budget manual CPC bidding strategy, budget and 10 individual responsive search ads for 10 of these products with a $10 daily budget for each. Also a manual CPC, thereby spending $200 per day across both shopping and search ad campaigns. Is this a good strategy? Also, I have a YouTube channel where I'm posting videos, creating use in video AI tool that all end with CTA for visiting my product link, cool. Video about husband struggling to find the best anniversary gift for his wife. And my product in the end being shown as the best gift he can buy. So I was thinking to run YouTube short ads for my top 10 products. I would appreciate your recommendations to follow when running YouTube short ads. YouTube ads, YouTube ads is, <laughs> is its own beast. There, yeah, you, you have to set that YouTube campaign up for mobile only. And then that way you're at your ad is only showing YouTube shorts and it has to be, you make sure that the video ratio is the YouTube short ratio. 
targeting there, I'd probably go after remarketing to begin with. I need to do some YouTube videos on how to create YouTube campaigns. I'll be honest, we're not specialists in YouTube ads. Like I know some guys that that's all they do. It's its own beast. And YouTube is very much about your creative more than anything. And so if the video creative is bad, usually it doesn't matter what your targeting is or your bidding or the structure. If the video is bad, it's just not going to work. So 80% of the time should be focused on creating a very good hook and story and call to action in that video. In regards to your strategy for your e-commerce business, I have a video on our YouTube channel and it's all about the new e-commerce strat or for new e-commerce Google ads accounts, the best strategy. Go check that video out. It'll be high, highly beneficial to you. But in your case, I would really focus most of my attention on your shopping ads versus search. Dial in shopping first. Why? 80% plus of revenue from e-commerce companies utilizing Google ads 80% of their Google ads revenue is from shopping ads in some form, whether that's in performance max or standard shopping. So dial in that piece first. CPCs are going to be cheaper. CT, your conversion rates are usually a bit higher there. Not always, but because sometimes you're getting more traffic, but it's less likely to convert dependent on how your search campaign structured. So ignore all of what I just said there in regards to that. It's a bit of a ramble, but Dial in shopping. Your CPCs are going to be cheaper. That is how most people want to buy, especially in e-commerce at the bottom of the funnel of those high intent searches. So dial that in first. Not saying you can't do a little search exposure, but normally what I recommend is get shopping working first. Find the search terms that work well for your shopping ads, then build your search campaigns based off of that. It'll save you some wasted ad spend then on the search side of things if you try to juggle both at once. Now, you could do both at once if you're gonna be diligent about it, but check that video out on our YouTube channel for a full strategy build out on that. Hello, we have an e-com niche product in the bathroom and tapware industry. Price is about 500 and market is in Australia. We're the only product in the country that can do what we do. Wondering if we should go PMAX or shopping ads plus search for this. I've heard PMAX is better for larger brand campaigns, but can be difficult to scale. Well, if you're brand new, I actually would, I would probably in your case, start with standard shopping and then see what, works with standard shopping. Get standard shopping to work. You have a little more control over, over performance max. See what search terms are going to work there. Very similar to my response to the last question. And then build off of that. You can go directly into PMAX. I still prefer not to on a new account. I prefer to go standard shopping first. Get a feel for the data. Get a feel for the search terms. Get a feel for the products that are going to do well and get a feel for the products that aren't going to do well. Then move into the performance max world. Uh, then move into search. Again, YouTube video on the, the, the best strategy for a brand new Google ads account for e-commerce businesses. I forget the exact title but it's one of the recent videos I did in the last month. It's on the YouTube channel. That video will be like highly valuable to you. So go check that out. Hi right, Austin, we started an online store with a single product, adjustable wooden laptop table that we manufacture ourselves. It's handcrafted premium product that starts at 429. We're starting at zero and we basically don't have any traffic yet. We're, not, we're now focusing on great product pages and want to test with Google ads and ideally find profitable ad flow sooner than later. To me, it doesn't feel 100% like a classic e-com business. We are a manufacturer with limited stock. So I'm unsure if your e-com videos are the right fit for us. Any thoughts on this? What campaign type would you recommend in our situation? Shopping ad, search ad, or something else? I believe I did a, an audit review for your account. Um, I look at so many accounts that things get fuzzy. So hopefully what I'm saying in this answer is not different from what I told you in the video. Because really it does, I, I vaguely remember the product now, but it does come down to you know the product and the website when I'm looking at and doing strategy sessions like that. So in your case, what you're telling me, in, in most cases, I would tell someone, it doesn't matter if you're the manufacturer, if, you have, if you're looking for direct to consumer purchases on your website, it's still an e-com play. So start with shopping ads and then build from there. Just like my last few responses in this video, you know, start with shopping, get a feel for that, 
get some data flowing and then build search from there or move into Pmax as well uh, later on once you have enough good conversion data there and have a feel for for the data that's flowing in. However, in your case, I I believe that there is some uniqueness to what you work what your product is. And I in in cases like this, sometimes it's actually better if you're not already doing it going to Facebook, Instagram and going that route is when it comes to a product that is unique like yours. Um, not always, but in some cases, it's just the best play. So uh, I forget exactly what I told you. Sorry, I'm not giving you like the best answer on this, but generally, yes, a product that's shopping, that direct to consumer, people can buy on your website, physical product, I still would go shopping ads first on a brand new account. Glad to hear you had an amazing vacation. Wishing you a safe trip home. Thank you. My question is, if you have a Google conversion tracking installed and are already getting sufficient conversions from other channels like Facebook, in my case, well over 150, is that good enough to start with a feed-only Pmax without any successful track record? Uh, no, um, because Google doesn't have access to that Facebook ad data. And so Google needs its own data through its own tag through Google ads in order for the machine learning to learn off of. So just because you have high volume success in Facebook does not immediately translate over to Google. So you'll have to treat Google still uniquely in regards to that. Thank you, Austin, for providing this value. I hope you had fun. Thanks, David. I did. So far, <clears throat> have you been able to discern how valuable Google ads are for local service businesses? I market for a niche fitness facility that helps kids become elite athletes and earn college scholarships. We operate in one location, a major city, but no one else is using our training method. Um, I'm curious how valuable Google ads would be. I've only done meta and X. Yeah, so <sighs> is Google ads good for local services-based businesses? Yes. That broad of a question, yes. However, there's nuances, right? Your market is niche. You're helping kids become elite athletes and earn college scholarships. That is a very unique offer, especially when it's localized to the city that you operate in. So, you have to look, is there anyone actually searching for that? Because you do not want to start targeting fitness facility, turn, well, no one's Googling fitness facility, but you, you don't want to start ta targeting like gyms, right? But there probably is some searches for parents who are searching for like, you know, fitness centers specific for kids or even sports, depending if you do sports related. So maybe even people looking at like basketball camps, football camps, you could try that route. The problem is no one is specifically searching for kids elite become elite athletes and earn college scholarships because that's very very niche. So your your industry, your play here is so niche that I think Meta, Facebook, I don't know about X ads, but Meta and Instagram for sure is probably the best play for you dependent on your uh, marketing budget, because there you're able to actually tell the story a little better. It's more visual and you can hit, you know, your audience fairly well through Facebook, Instagram on Google. You're going to have to be careful. Now, if you've already tapped out meta and Instagram ads, then, you know, you can start playing around with Google. But if I were you, and if you haven't if you haven't really matured out your Facebook ad campaigns, if you think you can continue to scale there, continue to test more creative there, I would be spending my marketing dollars on Facebook ads and Instagram ads, not Google in your case. Google would definitely come last in this case because it's just going to be super hard to find the high intent relevant terms to your niche demographic that you're, you're targeting. So max out meta max out Instagram first. If you want to make specific landing pages for every search campaign of a client of yours with service-based businesses, how are you, how are you managed to do it? Do you use landing page software? What do you do if you don't have access to the client domain? Uh, well, first of all, we don't create specific landing pages for every 
uh, ad group, I suppose, that we're going after every keyword themes. I'll go back to, I use this example a lot, plumbers. So we have, you know, let's say you have emergency plumbing terms and you have generic plumbing terms. My emergency plumbing is a specific service. We would have a landing page dedicated to that. Our generic plumbing terms are going to be more generic. We would have probably a landing page for that for any of our general plumbing terms. But anything that gets super specific that has enough volume, like emergency plumbing, I'm going to treat that uniquely and I'm going to put that in its own ad group with its own ads and the landing page will be specific to the emergency plumbing offer. That's how I look at it. We use landing page software. I have a team, a full team that does landing pages. I don't know what they do if they can't get access to the client's domain. The team takes care of that. Thankfully, I'm out of the weeds on a lot of that. So in that case, if you can't get access to the client's domain, you probably can't do the page for them. Um, but yes, we do use, I'm, I try to, I'm trying to think of the landing page software. I know Instapage has been used. Go High Level is being used as well. And there might be another one that's been used. I forget. We have a full landing page video on our YouTube channel. Go find that incredible information, highly valuable on real examples of landing pages that we use and have built. Um, and those, I believe, were built through Instapage. So, so go check that out. Okay. Hi, Austin. Interesting to read that Google will prioritize PMAX over shopping campaigns serving on the same from the GMC inventory. The shopping placement is highly competitive for e-com space we're in. Is the only way to get PMAX to push to shopping versus other placement is to run asset list asset groups. Looking forward to your thoughts. Okay. So first, yes. If you have a product that's in a performance max campaign and that same product lives in a standard shopping campaign, PMAX will take priority. So Google will yield to showing that product in the performance max campaign. I run a catch all shopping campaign a lot of times in our accounts. And so, you know, that's kind of a, a safety net in many cases. So if the same product lives in that shopping campaign and the same products in the performance max campaign, m most of the impressions and clicks you're going to find for that product will be in PMAX. And that is how Google just prioritizes the campaigns there. Then is the only way for a performance max campaign, if is the only way to push shopping only uh, to run a, what I would call, you call it an asset list asset group. I call it usually feed only asset groups. So that means just no assets whatsoever. Yes, that's the way to go. Basically, you're running what smart shopping used to be. So it's shopping ads mixed in with dynamic remarketing. So there will be dynamic product remarketing that can take place within a feed only asset group. But use the Microads PMAX script. It's in the PMAX course under the optimization piece. I have a full little section there. Install that script, it will give you visibility to where your costs are going from your performance max campaign. So make sure you have that, but that's the only route, yes, to run performance max and get, make sure you're not running search ads, make sure you're not, you know, it's not gonna be running video and it won't run a lot of other display, but it can run dynamic product ad display. Um, but, most of the time when I run a feed only asset group and I look at the script, I'm, I'm seeing it's pretty much a hundred percent or 90% shopping placement spend. And so just keep, make sure to keep an eye out on there. Hopefully that answered your question. Okay. There we go. Hopefully you guys got good value from this AMA. Hopefully I was able to, to answer these questions in a way that made sense for most of you. Again, if you're not a part of the school community, go join. It's free. The link's in the description below. I do this Ask Me Anything About Google Ads once a month, totally free, and I will do a video response to your question. Otherwise, a lot of questions in the community I can't always get to. I'm busy, and this is a way for me, though, it's to provide free value to the community. I like doing it. I like doing it better than live Q&As. Um, because I can actually think about the question and if I need to go find, uh, you know, other data to show to back up my claims, I can do that. And so on a live Q and A, you can't always get, get to that. So again, hopefully got good value from this. Uh, if you're not in the school community, PPC Launchpad, go join. And if you have questions, ask me on the next AMA. Thanks.